Wargaming Campaigns by Henry... Man, that really makes a satisfying thud, doesn't it? This thing is a beast. By Henry Hyde, let's go ahead and do a proper review of this tome and what a tome it is. A couple of things before we get into the review proper. I think this book is going to get a lot of glowing reviews. Henry Hyde is a good guy. If you're active on Wargaming YouTube, if you've read his other works... If you've read the articles on his blog or, you know, just kind of encountered him at the uh, shows or conventions, then you like the guy, you want him to do well, and we here at the channel want him to do well as well. Okay, that sentence kind of escaped from me. Uh, but we're going to give you an honest review. And t second of all, and related to that, I'm not going to tell you whether this is a good book or a bad book. That's outside the realm of, you know, I'm, I'm not qualified for that. What I can do is tell you what this book is, what it does, and how well it meets those, those its objectives. Because this is not a murder mystery, I'm not going to make you watch the whole video to understand what I think of the book. I think it's fine. It's good. I mean, it's, it's good. It, it does what it sets out to do. It's a good book, and maybe it's right for you. Maybe it's not. This video will help you understand whether it is or not. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what this is. It's a textbook. This is a solid overview of how to run wargaming campaigns. Specifically, and mostly, but not entirely, mostly an overview of how to set up uh, military campaigns, the logistics of running them, how to, uh, you know, how to manage all of the vast amounts of information that are required to send armies marching back and forth with an eye towards generating tabletop miniature war game battles. As I said, this is a broad overview. There are a lot of discursions into smaller subjects. For example, this tome does spend a page or two talking about Matrix games. Matrix games! A little bit on solo war gaming, um, particularly on solo campaigns, and different ways that you can run campaigns without even needing to own the miniatures. Um, in fact, he spends a fairly good amount of time talking about what Donald Featherstone referred to as domestic wargaming, which is all the various supporting bits, the world building and, you know, designing uniforms for your imaginations. And, or, or if you're, even if you're doing historical, this is where you come up with the campaign journals, where you're writing and, and tracking all of the, the information and logistics of your armies as they march back and forth. So you don't have to be a miniature war gamer to, to, to get any, something out of this, but that is its primary audience. So if you're not a miniature war gamer, boy, are you at the wrong channel. But um, there may be a little bit of something in here for you. Now, the, the big thing about this book is that it is a very useful introduction. If you have done a lot or even a little bit of tabletop miniature wargaming and you've always wondered about how to set up and run a campaign, this will take you through the entire process start to finish. If we do that thing that reviewers love to do and use the table of contents, and here's a little, you know, here's a plus in its side. It's got tabs. Oh, there's Henry himself. Does he look like a nice guy? He writes like a nice guy. The writing is very engaging. It's very warm. It's very friendly. It's not academic. Henry is, is sitting at your elbow, and he's talking to you about how he does things. It includes a lot of examples of how he has run his campaigns over the years, and in, in quite a good bit of detail. Uh, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Um, the, the point of this book is to serve as an introduction, and perhaps even a reference book. It is very broad and pretty shallow. It doesn't go very deeply into any of these topics. Uh, some deeper than others, of course. And um, as a result of this, it may have some limited usefulness to you if you have years of experience running a wargaming campaign. If you've already read Donald Featherstone and Tony Bath and C.S. Grant, then there may not be a whole lot of, of new information here for you. That said, one useful aspect of this book is right here, Chapter 11, Digital Campaigns, where Henry introduces you, I mean, you know, the guys I just mentioned, the guys I name check, they were writing like, what was it, 50, 60 years ago when the height of technology was put put a cellophane down and mark your, have each player put a clear piece of acetate down, mark their army movement, and then you stack those on top of each other. Well, I mean, we could do that digitally, right, to figure out where the armies meet. We do that here on the channel all the time. So he does update information and provide some, some valuable insight into how he has used digital software, whether it's online or, 
or you know what would you call it, Steam bought storefront software packages to build maps, track movement, track casualties, all that stuff. So that's that's pretty useful. Um, and then he does have a full chapter dedicated to war at sea and air power, which is is very useful. Um, but but again, nothing particularly innovative here. Nothing particularly new or or earth shattering. But that's not the point of the book, right? This book is for people that are just getting into the hobby or into the hobby, getting into this particular aspect of the hobby. And it's also a useful reference manual. In each of these cases where he goes into, uh, what do we got? Skirmish and role play, or we the people, personality driven campaigns, or with or without umpires. Whenever he, he does get into these subjects, he does include references to places you can go to find deeper uh, insight into that particular aspect. That is one of its primary uses for me. I can go to the wonderful bibliography back here. I mean, it's page after page after page of references and say, ah, I want to know more about, and we'll just pick one at random here as we flip through. Um, oh, that's illustrations. Wow, this has, uh, this has, what is this called? An in, what is an in decks. I'm joking, of course. We don't see these very often in, in miniature war game books. So I, it's, it, we, saw, we saw them, by the way, as I climb on my hobby horse, you know, you see this in the AD&D manuals. Uh, but, so that's kind of nice. If you want a quick reference for, for the individual things, where's the references? I thought there was, I thought there, 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 there we go. Miss, wait, no, what? Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about here. There it is. I knew it was back here. I knew it. All roads lead to Rome, the variety of campaigns, and then look at all these. Look at just page after page of go check out these, these books, blogs and websites, right? So valuable for that. And also, you know, in any time when you've got 500 pages of information that's given to you by a guy that's been engaged in this hobby for multiple decades, you're going to find new ways to do things that you hadn't considered. There are, even for the experienced wargamer, there are little gems buried within the text, and that's that's good, right? So this is part of why this is not necessary. That's why I think it's valuable for every Wargamer to have this on their shelf. Even if you've been doing this for a long time, you're going to get some value out of this. Not nearly as much as someone who's only been doing this for a couple of years. Um, I'll, I'll say this. He, he goes to Wikipedia. Like, a lot of these chapters begin... And he's, he's fishing for definitions. And it's like, oh, the definition of courage. Instead, of, it used to be Daniel Webster in all the speeches. Nowadays, it's Wikipedia defines courage as, I mean, Wikipedia. Really? Come on, bro. You might, what are you doing? You might, as well, you might as well say, according to CNN. Come on. Um, Henry's a good writer. He should have just defined it himself. He should have put it in his own words. The other thing, that minor nitpick here, he does uh, go to the two fat lardies well constantly. In fact, I bet you I have a, there's a, he talks about ladder campaigns in here, which he's introduced to by Two Fat Lardies. I mean, he's obviously a Two Fat Lardies fanboy, and if you are, for some bizarre reason, a fan of Two Fat Lardies, then you're going to get a lot of validation out of this book, because, man, he keeps going back there. Uh, I'm not. But again, this is me up on my hobby horse, so I'll climb down now and get back to the book. The, um, you know, a lot of great illustrations. Like I said, it's very easy to read. It's well laid out. And um, he does include a cam the campaign rules for all the ages. And I think this is useful to talk about as well. This is, because it's a broad overview, he doesn't just deal with one specific time frame. And he doesn't just deal with one specific scale of conflict. I don't mean figure scale. I mean whether they're talking man-to-man, squad-to-squad, platoon-to-platoon, division-to-division, army-to-army, spaceship-to-spaceship. It covers all genres, fantasy, historical, near future, sci-fi. There is a lot of ground to cover. I mean, this is an enormous hobby. And he, Henry does a very good job touching on every single aspect of it. He talks about how a campaign could be limited to a platoon versus a platoon fighting over a town, a series of battles over a town. As one side is driven out, one is driven in. So it's not just the epic grand scale we're going to refight napoleon's you know what is it 1815 campaigns no no, no. It's, it's it's all the small little details as well and but 
Um, as I said, he does include this campaign rules for all the ages. This could be ripped straight out of, and this is a compliment. This is exactly the sort of thing that you saw in Donald Featherstone and Tony Bass. Rules just laid out. Here's how you set up. Here's the each campaign week. Each campaign move is one week. You know, and just through the whole thing, through movement, weather, prisoners, logistics. You know, this this is you know, he he defines you know based on the number of figures you've got as a patrol is this is using a one to twenty ratio. So it's it's a really nicely laid out example. And yeah, granted, there are a grand total of um, man. I don't, well, see that this is where the the color tabs come in. There are a grand total of well, now we're getting into weather. It's like seventy two. So magazines and not the kind you read, but you know the kind of of stores. There's like 80 individual rules, but you don't have to read them all and memorize them all because a lot of these, like prisoners, they're not going to come up until they come up. And then you go back and you reference that. So useful to have in one place. And when it comes to, you know, when you want to know, oh, you know, I'm doing a campaign using this other set of rules, but oh, wait a minute. We hadn't thought about prisoners. How do we handle prisoners? Boom. It's right here. A, cl a great example of how you can manage prisoners. What's the ratio of guards to prisoners? How fast do prisoners move? You know, what are the resources that are required to manage those prisoners that might make you want to engage in a prisoner exchange because, hey, you know, at least I'm feeding my own people instead of his people. Yeah, he's getting some of his boys back, but, you know, at least it's cheaper for me and I'm getting some value out of these prisoners. So that's what I mean by a valuable reference. And, and again, some of these rules can be lifted whole cloth and plugged into any campaign that you're running. So very useful read. And it's a quick read, right? I got this on Friday. It's now Monday. I think I read it over the weekend. And I mean, not, not to be honest with you, I'm not much of a naval war gamer, so I did kind of skim the air power and the naval aspects of campaigns. And, and I, I do need to study this in a lot more detail because I do so much black powder there's there's certain areas of campaigning where two so forgive the the cut there. Um, there's certain aspects where there's overlap, and I don't know how really to connect those together. So we'll be giving this a second read in more detail and seeing how you can integrate naval power with land based power. The example campaign that he gives you does have that as well, so very useful for that. Um, Again, he goes into great detail on how you can make maps, how you can use, and, and what we typically call point-to-point -point maps. He discusses that as well. Uh, whether you're going to be doing a continent like this, where you're simply moving armies risk style over borders and conquering individual regions, which, hey, wait a minute. Incontinentia, that's Spain, that's France, that's Great Britain. Ro hey, that's, that's Russia. I figured it out. That's kind of clever. He just mixed it up and jammed it up. Whatever. Um, Dahlia and his imaginations gets a lot of information. How to use cards. He checks, I think it's, a, is it Jim Webster? Uh, on how to use cards to generate terrain. And this may be all you need. Then you write down your grid to grid because your armies are moving from square to square. Talks about the value of hexes versus squares. He talks about this is what's going to be, you're going to see in an upcoming campaign of mine where we're using real world maps and we're like zooming in and taking advantage of the technology. I don't know if you knew this or not, but Donald Featherstone never once in any of his books does he mention using Google Maps. Kind of an oversight on Donald Featherstone's part, if you ask me. But that's okay, because Henry Hyde is here to take up the slack with this volume. There are a couple of other little bits in here that I particularly enjoyed, and a better reviewer than I would have, like, dog-eared them. Well, maybe not dog-eared them. Uh, if you're one of those physical guys, yeah. It, it's a hardback book. It's got a dust jacket. It's it's semi-gloss paper. It looks like it'll hold up really well. I mean, the binding is great. So there you go. There's all the, like, you know, if you're if you're a physical boy. In historical campaigns, any Catholic countries may be, and future campaigns, by the way, and in historical and any remotely accurate future campaign, Catholic countries may boost their resources by 10%, while Protestant countries must reduce theirs by the same amount. And then, of course, there's an inverse to this. These are examples of campaign event cards. So you draw a card every week. The chance cards is what they were typically referred to. He also has a, camp, a, a nice fat table in here. What is that? Free post? Uh, Pen and Sword Books. It's published by Pen and Sword Books. I bought this. Uh, the, I pre-ordered this from directly from the publisher, which I recommend. Um, and again, right here, here, here's some nice references down here. Oh, he's got a little footnote. And then hey, look at that. There's a... Uh, what should we look at? Wikipedia. Oh, jeez. Use Infogalactic. What are you doing? But here's a reference to... 
you know, uh, .gov, NIH.gov. Is that National Institute of Health? Yeah, got to name check COVID, you know, you, you, you got to pay the piper there. Um, but he does have a kind of a, a random event table in here that, that, that does similar things. Uh, he uses a very, you right, see, I told you, there's some space. Where's what I'm looking for? There, there's a, a random event, campaign event in here that, that cracked me up. Uh, blame the Jesuits! Ha <laughs> classic. Hey, I, yeah, I finally feel represented in a miniature war game. If the player represents France or Spain in a historical campaign or America in the current year, he has suffered a Jesuit plot which breaks his alliance with any minor country. <laughs> hey, troops, <laughs> ah, that cracks me up. And then again, boy, talk about your, uh, your, your wonderful... What's the opposite of a red flag? This, this, this busted me up. And this is where I was like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm among friends here. This is good stuff. Um, now, throughout this work, I have used the masculine third-person pronoun he and his when referring to a typical wargamer. Based? Uh, there's some weasel word here, but, you know, whatever. I, he, can we be real here? Let's be, we know who's reading this book. I, I, I can't imagine a whole lot of... This is going to appear on a whole lot of, like, wedding registries. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, a lot of little fun little sides like that. And I say that just as a as an example of the of the brief asides. We can just at picking any of these, right? These footnotes. There's a weather chart for, you know... You can figure out how to use that. Um, a lot of great color plates. Some phenomenal miniature photography in here. But most of the illustrations, as I just kind of flip through this, most of the illustrations are informative. Oh, there's our random effects table. So all the low numbers are bad. I'll give you an example. This year's crop of officer recruits is disappointing. For every new officer appointed to command, deduct 10 points from their intelligence or initiative. He offers a six stat, um, you guys could call it a character sheet for all of your commanders, and then uses a very interesting system where you're basically rolling percentile. And if you roll under their ability, then good things happen. If you roll over, then the worse you blow that roll, the worse things get. So, for example, when it comes to, like, um, initiative, if you have to make an initiative check and you blow it by, like, 30%, then there are very serious effects to that. He's a dithering fool when he should be, you know, moving really quickly. Um, another example here, uh, holy shoes, the commissariat. Syriat has done a brilliant job in the infantry and issued new boots. They have extra spring and all infantry movement is increased by 20%. So, you know, just it's it's a dice driven mechanic that does the same thing as the chance cards. And, you know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. They, a, a, a random events table is nothing new or groundbreaking, but it is useful to see. And you can read through this and you can get ideas for what you should put into your chance cards or you should put into your random effects cards. Obviously... If you're not using France or Spain or America in the current year, then the Jesuit plot isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. Um, but, you know, here's some other things, right? Social media, this is other great places to go. Facebook, the meta, you know, YouTube, forums that you can use. I, again, I, I don't know what Donald Featherstone was thinking back in the 19, late 60s when he didn't mention Twitter. Uh, um, solo war gaming matrix, like I said. Now he doesn't. One of the things that I was expecting this book, I was hoping for, was what we're calling team solo campaigning. He does have a couple of paragraphs for that, but I, and I think this is important to note that that Henry Hyde, and this may be part of why he is such a big fan of the two fat lardies. I know those guys are very active in the the Britbong circles and in the campaign circuit. And I know Henry Hyde is as well. So his experience as a man who exists in a like wider culture that has a lot of support for big clubs with lots of people is going to color how he approaches most of this. As a guy who is way out in the hinterlands of the of the hobby world where there is not nearly as much logistical support in the real world a lot of that stuff just isn't quite so useful to me um but again there is some information on solo wargaming and it's it's a wonderful broad overview it does a great job covering a lot of territory it doesn't delve too deep into any one topic and it is written in a fun and engaging style it's a very, it's a quick read altogether, and Henry Hyde is just a warm host as he takes you through this journey. 
I ordered this, I pre-ordered this for 50 bucks directly from the publisher penandsword.co.uk a year and a half ago. And that was back when $50 would fill your gas tank. Oh, remember those days? Those were nice. Nowadays, it's retailing. The, the list price is $70. I don't know that I'd pay $70 for this. Even in current dollars. Um, I don't know that I got that much use out of it. The question that I have after reading through this is this. And I'll leave it to you guys to hash out in the in the comment section. Should I, knowing how, having heard this whole spiel, is it worth getting the Wargaming Compendium that Henry Hyde has also published? It's a very popular book. I got to be honest with you, I don't know that I'd get as much, I think I would get just as much out of that book as this one. And kind of sitting on the fence about whether to do that. The tiebreaker is, I will probably pick it up just because the tiebreaker is that very feminine uh, perspective of, well, these will look really good on the shelf together. And when people walk in and are looking at my my shelf, they'll, they don't, won't that look great when they're together? Which, to be honest, is, is not a great reason to buy a book. But again, if it is the same kind of broad overview with little buried gems of things that I hadn't thought of and... You know, Henry Hyde is an expert, and you would be a fool not to listen to an expert. So, in the grand scheme of things, is this the right book for you? Well, maybe if the price is right, if you can afford this, um, if you are new to the hobby, or if you want everything all in one place, if you're looking for some new ways to do things, there may be some in here. Uh, but when it comes to groundbreaking new and innovative ways of managing all of the vast amounts of information that can go into a campaign, uh, you're going to have to look elsewhere. You're going to have to look for guys that are on the cutting edge and still experimenting. And honestly, that's a big part of this book too, right? This is not meant to innovate or experiment and risk failure. That There's a different venue for that. This covers the history of the book. And to his credit, Henry does name check all of those towering giants on whose shoulders we all stand. He does go into the history of wargaming and how different campaigns came about and, you know, who is is widely credited with discovering or and codifying these particular rules. So on the whole, on the balance, it's a it's a good book. It's a fine book. It might not do exactly what you're looking for, but that's okay. It's still a valuable addition to any wargamer shelf. I hope this review helps you. If you think I'm an idiot, too many asides, you know how to contact me. There's like a whole section right down there. I'm praying for you.